five, four, three, Hi, my name is Jocelyn Hudson Brown with the Inquiring News. We are here today chatting with Mayor Thurman Milner. We're very pleased to have you here, sir, today. It's my pleasure. Thank being you. Here. Yes. And what the topic of our conversation is going to be the Urban League and is the celebration 50 year anniversary. And the theme this year, um, or for this celebration, is looking back and marching forward. And uh, first of all, I think that people should know that you were the first African-American ever elected to mayor in any New England city. And specifically for us, as far as we're concerned, uh, the first African-American mayor ever elected in the state of Connecticut, and that's Hartford, Connecticut, where you served from 1981 to 1987. So I should say to you, congratulations on your milestone as well. You led the way for, uh, I, I imagine, John Daniels, and now uh, out of New Haven, and Tony Harp out of New Haven as well, so. We're both good friends of mine. Oh, absolutely, that's <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, 50 years ago, uh, President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, which made discrimination illegal in the United States. And the, uh, the National Urban League was part of that, that historic day. I mean, they were right on hand. They received pins at the signing, the president, and everything else. Can you comment a little bit on the significance of, of that, that particular occasion? Yeah, very significant because, number one, uh, my involvement in politics began with the Civil Rights Movement, where I marched and demonstrated with Dr. Martin Luther King and some of the Urban League early people. Uh, and in Harford, uh, Bill Brown became known as Mr. Urban League in the greater Hartford area for the kind of work the Urban League was doing right here in our city during the, the times of disturbances in Hartford when they had the riots in Hartford. He was one of those with Will, late Senator Wilbur Smith who became peacemakers in our community and the Urban League became a, actually a focus here in Hartford for not only did they have them doing those days but looking forward as what would happen in the city of Hartford. So there was great concern then with the Urban League, NAACP, and other organizations as where would, where would we go from that time forward because it was a very tough time of turmoil, mm -hmm. uh, not only nationally, but in our city as well. How, did, uh, how do you think that Hartford responded to that? Well, Hartford responded very, very well. Unfortunately, the rioting took place in our own community, yes. right, in, in North Hartford. It was great destruction. Uh, but we came out of it, I think, much, much stronger. The Urban League became a, a, a national figure here in the city of Hartford. Uh, Bill Brown, as I said, became known as, as Mr. Urban League because he actually was in the forefront of working to bring the communities together. He worked with the NAACP, he worked with downtown uh, investment people to talk about rebuilding North Hartford. Right, right. Uh, <clears throat> now, one of you speak of rebuilding North Hartford. One of the missions of the uh, Urban League is economic empowerment. You know, uh, economic empowerment specifically, how do you think that, that you know, the focus on that is going to be beneficial to the African American community versus, say, education or anti-violence or, you know, a number of other agendas that, that, that organizations well, have I think, nowadays. I think if you talk about economic empowerment, you're talking about education, you're talking about all the other things, because actually when you start educating our youngsters as we begin to do, they're going to need the economic empowerment. It's important that when they graduate from high school, from college, there's some economic empowerment for them to come back to. One of the problems in Hartford is most of our graduates leave the city because there's nothing here for them to do. Mm -hmm. As far as economic empowerment is concerned, there's nowhere for them to go. Uh, we've lost most of our major industries here in the city of Hartford. Uh, the job market is very low in the city of Hartford. I think the direction the urban need now is to look at how can we build the economic empowerment. We have the schools. The schools are, are beginning to rebuild, as you know, the school named after me here in the yes, city of Hartford. Yes. And they're beginning to revitalize our school system. So if with economic empowerment, give them something to do rather than leave Hartford uh, after graduation from college to come back into our city and begin to be a vital part of the city of Hartford. Okay, well, well speaking of the schools and the agenda for the Urban League and the Civil Rights Movement, Hartford schools in the past have taken a hit with regard to discriminatory practices and things of that nature. How has that, how has that you know, improved over the years? Because well, you still hear some. Yes, it's amazing talk because of it. when I was a youngster, uh, I went to Arsenal School with the first black teacher 
in, in Hartford. So if you look at it back in those days up to now, it's improved tremendously. Okay. Uh, I'd say 50% of the teachers in most of our schools are African American or Puerto Rican right now. Uh, it's improved greatly. I think the attitude of the administrators have changed quite a bit. Uh, we're greatly concerned about how it, you know the administration of the state would look at the city of Hartford because what, I, what I'm proud of is the work trend now to begin to look at schools uh, like the Nova School, not because it carried my name, but because it was the worst performing school in the state. Yes. And to see the governor take a stand to begin to improving that school. And I think when Bill Brown would look back and smile or something like that because when it was first named, he was one of the first people that came to me and said that uh, let's do something about Milner School. And that was the, one of the things that he was focusing on not just the economic empowerment part, but starting with a little with our youth beginning to build. The Urban League became a focus play, place for job training, for GEDs, and other things that happened here in the city of Hartford. Okay, well, getting back to the focus of the Urban League and the celebration of 50 years, the current president CEO, Mark Moriel, says that um, we're a better nation now than we were in 1964. Um, do, you, do you agree with it? Is it up for debate? or? <laughs> Well, it's much better. Yes, I served with his, his, when his father was mayor, he both served in the National Conference of Black Mayors. And if you look at back at, at that time up to now, things have changed tremendously. Uh, racism now is more institutionalized, where it was more open before. Yes. But I found that particularly in the South, when, when, the, when the bill was signed, the, the whole attitude of the South was entirely different. If you look at Atlanta and other places in the South, it's, improve much more than the North. We have a long way to go compared with the South. And I think that's because in the South, even though it was uh, segregation, the blacks worked in the homes of the whites and they've been very close to the white community. Where in Hartford, there's a lot of segregation because uh, we didn't have black colleges here. We didn't have black institutions here. Uh, most people in Hartford were domestics. They were not uh, ed college educated. Yes. And it became a different attitude. So. When people came in, came in from the South and began to even look at us differently than, than other blacks because of the way we began, you know, we carried ourselves in the city of Hartford. We had a lot of pride, but we didn't have the education that many of the Southern blacks had had at the time. So it's like six or one and a half a dozen. Right. And we just need to come together it was and figure it all but out. We, I, see, I see that, you know, things have come together greatly, uh, improved tremendously. There's a lot ways to go. We got a long way to go as far as institutionalized black racism is concerned. If you look at what's happening with our president today, uh, everybody calls it everything else but what it needs to be called. Uh, but those kind of things need to be begin to look at. But I think that he's doing a tremendous job uh, along with his wife of, of being able to stand where he's standing and accept all the things that's been thrown at him and still begin to look at America as a vital part of of the whole change of the world. Well, do you know, it's funny that you should bring up uh, President Obama. Do you think that the African American leaders are, are respected on the same level as, as you know, a, a, a non-African American mayor or a senator or anything else? Or do, you, or do you still see where there's obstacles to be overcome and then why? I mean, just speaking of our president, he could be anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, he's a gentleman with with a Harvard degree and, and well educated, well rounded. Why you know why the trouble? Well, because there's still racism in America. People don't. They always want to push that under the cover like it doesn't exist. You don't hear that when you talk about Obama and the work he's doing. No one will look at at the undercover racism that still exists in the United States. He's the president of the United States. He's doing a tremendous and a great job. But if you look at all the things that are being thrown at him as president that we still have to work and overcome that still exists. And even here in the city of Hartford, we still see that in, the, in a lot of areas. Uh, not as it used to be in my day when it was blatant, but we still see that they are a long way to go. Uh, I remember when I first ran for mayor, uh, a, a young lady came to me, and I guess she just came to America, and she looked at me and said, uh, we don't need your kind as mayor of our city. Oh and I was my. born and raised here in the city oh of Hartford. And she looked like she had just got off the boat. And it sort of tickled me at the time, but I, this is the whole attitude, I think, when you look across the country that's beginning to change, but beginning to change very slowly. A lot of people thought with the election of uh, uh, President Obama that it was automatically over, but no. I think what he did, he brought out some of the worst and other people and really brought forward what we really have to face today. Well, that's a point, because a lot of, of what the Urban League does, and, and 
many other organizations whose agenda is to help people is that they're they're looking to touch the hearts and minds of young people because you know it's a cliche but they are the future oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. if you have young people now looking at the way that they treat the first african-american president and everybody has an idea that it's blatant I'm sure you may not agree with all of his agendas and objectives mm -hmm. you know it's different democracy we're entitled to be able to do that express them mm -hmm. but some of the things are a little bit more ugly than that oh, yeah. so you know if you have a gentleman from from that particular hierarchy of like I said of education and influence and then you just have a kid that's coming from Bridgeport or Hartford or New Haven and if he's being treated like this how are they supposed to expect any kind of you know, even treatment or, or, or equality or anything going forward, what are their chances? What do you tell them? Well, I think it serves as a lesson to them. They can actually see that they can aspire to be what President Obama is and still face the obstacles that they face today in their daily living. You know, they can look, you know, forward to what they can accomplish and in spite of the obstacles that they face. In spite of the things that are thrown at them, they still can accomplish much more than, let's say, when I was a youngster yes. here in the city of Hartford. They can look forward to becoming president, becoming governor, becoming Well, here's a boy CEOs. that grew up and became mayor. How do you like oh, yes. that? <laughs> and basically, I grew up, you know, basically from a very poor family here in the city of Hartford, in the north end of Hartford, not far from where uh, the Thurman Elementary School is located. Uh, we were from a welfare family in the city of Hartford, so I, I can probably go to the youngsters and say, you know, if, if I can do it, so can you, because you're, you're six, I had six brothers and one sister, and basically we grew up in a single family. My father died in the hospital when I was about age 12. I had been in the hospital since I was age three, so we came from a single family mother who raised all of us. And uh, I think we did pretty well here in the city of Hartford. And I tell these kids and I go and talk to them in the schools that there's nothing now that can stop them. The obstacles that I face were much, much more serious than what they face here today. So I, I would imagine that in a nutshell, a positive outlook is always needed, regardless of the obstacles. Oh, yeah, you know, you, you there's always gonna be use something. the obstacles, obstacles as challenges. You look at those things, you know, these are things we have to fight to get where we are today. And I think what's happened to a lot of our young people, they don't realize the struggles that gave them the opportunities that they have today. They don't look at what people went through in the Civil Rights Movement and the death of Dr. King. They always think about Dr. King's dream, but they don't realize the struggle behind that dream that made them have accomplished what they've been able to accomplish today. You know, and again, mm -hmm. keeping with the theme, looking backward and moving forward. I remember when I was a kid, I was a little bit too young to participate in the civil rights movement. But I do remember seeing dogs and, on TV and mm. with the water biting right. the nice people and the people being sprayed and they had on their Sunday best and everything. Mm. So therefore that, that stood with me, you know. Right. So w what do we give the young people that's gonna put in their mind that Dr. Martin Luther King is more than, you know, the I have a dream speech? Well, I think, you know, I think we have to teach them that. We're, we're, we're not teaching our youngsters about the struggle. We're telling them about you know, Martin Luther King and his dream. We're talking about Harriet Tubman and all the others throughout history, Frederick Douglass, but we don't really talk about the struggle that went through to brought us where we are today. What happened during the days of slavery, the beatings and the struggles and the hangings and the lynchings. We talk about the good things that happened in black history. But our young people need to know how they got to where they are today, that this just didn't happen, that, that we did come over here as slaves. Be proud to know that they their ancestors were slaves. You know, when I was young, so I thought it's a bad thing to be. It was the worst thing ever to be associated with that. To know the history, that, yeah. they took the best of Africa and right. brought them over here as right. slaves. And we have to, I don't think we need to understand that. Right. Now, do you think that the role models they have today are, are helpful in that matter? The images they see, you know, because well, our images, again, were of people struggling. Right. Who knows, Vietnam War again, people struggling, a cause women rights, gay rights, or whatever. Mm. What they see today is a far cry from mm. yeah. people trying to do good. But I think, I think a lot of our leaders must do much more than they're doing now to get in touch with our young people of color, particularly. Uh, you know, a lot of our leaders are, are off in their own avenues and directions. And, but that's one thing I, I, I can say about the Urban League, it has stayed focused. Good. Which a lot of the other organizations seem to just have branched out and, looking beyond their own communities. And I think that that's something the Urban League has focused on. Well, that, that's very good. Now, now mm -hmm. let's go to the marching forward because mm -hmm. Urban League has maintained a focus and they haven't really 
just throw them seeds to the wind. Hopefully, mm. we'll see which one will catch. This is our agenda. This is what we've been doing. And if we plug along on this, we'll see forward progress. So going forward, what do you think that um, the mission or and or the agenda for the Urban League, should, what do you think it should look like? Well, I, you know, I think it's, the focus is right on empowerment. I think that's very important and very necessary because that's a piece that is really missing. You know, we, everybody's focusing on education, which is very, very important. But once you're educated, where are you going to go? And without economic empowerment, then you have no place to go. And particularly, like I said, in the greater Hartford area, if you look today at how what's happening in our city, in the morning when you come in, I would say 90% of those that work in our city come from outside the city. But most Hartford residents have nowhere to go because they don't have the kind of empowerment they need to move forward with. It's very important. You know, Bill Brown talked about that many, many years ago, and his focus was on helping young people to get up and raise up to get into the insurance industry at that time because Hartford was then called the insurance center of the world. It's no longer the insurance center of the world. So Urban Lady is doing the right thing, looking at how they can empower people to get into what's going on today as we become a nation now focused more on, on the internet and all these other right. things that didn't exist in my day. Okay, so we're gonna take a moment and then we'll resume our interview shortly. Okay. Thank you.